It is so important to have a proper mindset going into the book of Revelation if you want to gain a proper interpretation. What do I mean by proper mindset? Well, for example, when someone asks you a question about why Paul wrote something that seems to put the Torah in a viewpoint of being something to be disregarded, we know from evidence in the epistles that Paul was Torah observant, and his desire was clearly that all men be Torah observant. So with that mindset well established, obviously Paul would never condemn the Torah. So in trying to properly interpret Revelation's timeline, we must bear in mind the fact that these prophecies began to be fulfilled during the days of the existence of the seven churches the apostles established throughout Asia Minor, as I have clearly given you the reasons why. With that mindset and the fact the book was written in code to protect the Nazarenes, let us begin with the four horses of the Apocalypse the first four seals starting in Revelation 6 1 now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder come and see and I looked and behold a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer this is not Yeshua riding on this horse sometime in the future as the Catholic Church would love for you to believe. First of all, the word crown here in Greek is stephanos, which is a twined wreath commonly made of laurel leaves and a status symbol used by the pagan Roman Empire. Rome made these crowns out of both real leaves and gold leaves and placed these crowns on their emperor's heads, on their marble statues, as well as their coins. In contrast, Revelation 19.12, Yeshua is on a white horse and the Greek word for crown is diadem, which is a completely different kind of crown. And rather than carrying a bow, Yeshua has a sword coming out of his mouth, signifying the Torah. This white horse represented the Cretan dynasty of emperors, who all used the symbol of the bow, the white horse, and wreaths on their heads. And both the Nazarenes and the Protestant reformers knew this. So, subsequently, all four of the horses and riders, as we will see, represent different phases of the rise and ultimately the fall of the pagan Roman Empire. The time period of the white horse and rider was Rome during the height of her conquest from Emperor Nerva through Marcus Aurelius, approximately 96 A.D. through 180 A.D. This time period is well known as the Golden Age of Rome, when the empire expanded while ruled by a dynasty of five Cretan emperors, well known for their superior bowmanship. Rome was able to use tens of thousands of archers in battle to blacken the sky with arrows against their enemies as they rode forth conquering all the lands from what is known today as the land west of India all the way to Great Britain and from Germany and parts of southwest Russia southward to the entire northern coast of North Africa including Egypt stretching over six and a half million kilometers of earth and when Revelation uses the term earth it is not talking about the whole world, only the whole known earth of the Roman Empire. Rome perpetuated Hellenistic culture, the worship of pagan gods, the persecution of the Nazarenes, as well as the Jews, for they worshipped only one god, and their culture and Torah observant lifestyle was hated by Rome. This is well established history, and it is important to begin the timeline of Revelation in approximately 96 AD as we move forward from there with the rise and fall of the pagan Roman Empire. I'm Bill Sanford, trying to put the book of Revelation in proper perspective in our day.